Hello and welcome to your second vinyl lesson where we're going to uh, use the bow. But first of all, I would like you to swing your arm, just like this, as if you're walking. What I like to do when I teach the vinyl is to um, reference the things we do in our bodies, anyway, um, to playing the vinyl. And I think walking, that motion of the arm swinging, is very similar to how the arm feels when it's just 90 degrees difference. So from here to here. And also, um, when you shake hands, you put your, your hand down, don't you? And that's, that's part of the bow hold, having your hand downwards like that. So that swinging of your arm this way and this way. And if you notice when you swing your arm, what happens if you swing it like this and hold it? Your wrist just, it moves as a reflex action to the arm, doesn't it? And that, that feeling of being relaxed when you're bowing is what we're aiming for, even when you have a bow in your hand. So it's a good, good thing just to swing your arm and what, what does it feel like and then change direction. Anyway, let's, let's hold the bow first of all. So what I want you to do is to put your bow on your lap with the horsehair facing you and the frog um, just a little bit over the edge. I, I don't know why this is called a frog, but anyway, there it is. So bring your right arm up, and I'm just going to hold this so you can see it better, and place your horsehair on that bottom knuckle of your hand like this. And then with your middle finger, come through the stick and the hair and place it so that it's just about level with the nail. And then the first finger cradles the stick, doesn't grip it in any way, it just cradles it, and the thumb just uh, it just it, it just tickles, if you like, tickles the stick. It doesn't doesn't press down on it. It just it just um, just tickles it. So um, let's just hold the vial and do some bowing. But first of all, let's do it under the strings. So if you just like to hold your vial and get comfortable, remembering turning the right side in keeping it vertical. So let's just bow the belly of the instrument and see if you can release your arm weight while you're holding the vial. It's rubbing on the bridge a little bit. And then when you've done that, put your bow, um, let's have your bow on the C string at the tip, that's this end. This end is called the heel. And then hold the bow with your left hand and then move your arm up and down the bow. Again, feeling the arm weight, what that's like. Now, if you have a look down here, down the string, and tip the bow forward onto the E string, making sure you've got a little bit of clearance either side, hold the bow again, and then change that arm position. And let's do the same thing for the A string. So can you see that your arm's coming further around? Like this. And then if we were to do it to the D string, you can see how far that's round. And this makes perfect sense now, doesn't it, of having the vial turned in. If we turn it back, look how much further I have to go. It's a long way, isn't it? So that's a really important part of posture with our bow, um, to consider the bow. I'm just going to put the vial down again. Um, one of the um, things that my students ask me sometimes is how, um, how tight to tighten the hair. And I think this can depend a lot on the density of the stick and what the stick's like. But if your bow starts to look like it's got a big camber on it, and um, Robin Hood could ping a bow off it and then it's too tight. Um, if when you put the bow on the string and um, your second finger is a bit floppy, well too floppy, and, it's, and the bow stick is grating on the string, then that's too, too loose. So ideally, you want a little bit of movement in the horsehair, but not too much. Let's just look at rosining a bow now. 
When you rosin a bow, put the rosin in your left hand and start from the tip end and give it a bit of a, a scrub, I suppose. Give it a bit of a scrub. Get the rosin into the, the horse hair and work down the bow. And then when you get to the bit where you hold it, stop. Because you don't want to put rosin where you hold it, otherwise you get really sticky fingers. And for modern string players, this is quite <laughs> counterintuitive because you normally start at the heel, don't you? You're holding it that way. And um, yeah, so like this. Okay, then one of the bits of equipment that we have, oh, I've got a few hairs falling off my bow here. One of the bits of equipment that we have, um, and a very important piece of equipment, is a duster. Because when you've finished bowing, when you've finished playing, you wipe the stick of the bow, not the hair, wipe the stick, wipe all the rosin off. Then you wipe the belly of the instrument, particularly today, because we've done um, bowing on the belly. And then you wipe the strings. If you don't have enough rosin on your vine, on your bow, then um, it be the, your your bow will um, feel like it's not making contact at all, and, and a bit like it's ice skating. And, and if you have too much rosin, which is completely possible, then it sort of gets caked up on the string here, and you can't make contact with the string because it's got so much rosin on it. So every time you finish playing, that's your thing you do. I'd like to start off with Vile Aerobics today, and uh, Vile Aerobics is in Bar Playbook 1. And it's, um, let's have a look at what page it's on first of all. It's a, uh, I'll just find the page. <laughs> it's on page 14, and it's an exercise, a bow exercise, that I've developed throughout this series um, where you um, you play eight C's, eight E's, eight, four C's, four E's, two C's, two E's. And we can do this by starting with fours and twos and you can practice it with, with eight. Um, but this is important. Um, this string crossing from C to E is something that you really want to get under your belt at this stage and doing it forward and back like this. Let's try bowing, shall we? So let's do four C's. So you've got your bow hold. Let's do four C's and four E's. Here we go. Three, four. Come forward. but you go forward and back and in a way I sometimes think about my my leg as a bit of a runway for the bow because it's staying parallel with the leg and I sometimes imagine when I'm bowing that I'm bowing under a table this is my imaginary table so if I put my table here and I bow I can do C E and I can come round to A still coming forward, still going down my leg. And then when I play the top string, I just take off. It doesn't work on the top string, playing it under the table. But for here, coming round to G, it's a really good way of thinking about going forward and back. So there's a lovely piece on page um, 23 called Lullaby, and I'd like to play that now. But let's just check your bow hold first, shall we? So, we've got second finger on the hair. We've got the first finger at the bottom of the, the, uh, the hair, at the bottom of the knuckle. And the thumb is just um, butting up against the stick. 
So if you've got a longer thumb than me, which is highly likely, you might have to have your bow hair at a slightly different place down the finger to accommodate that. I find um, having the thumb here before you uh, before the stick, it stops, stops gripping. And now I'd like to just check your bow hold by testing your ping. And ping is where you just knock the bow off. And if your palm is vertical here, which it is, hopefully, and not like this, if your palm is open, then it, it reduces the pressure on the second finger and you feel like you're going to drop the bow. So this is ping, just to check your ping. And we've got very clear points of contact here, haven't we? We've got one here, one here and one here. And the bow hold isn't complete until the bow is resting on the string. And that's really important. If I take my bow off, I have to take it off with the other hand. I can't take it off with this one unless I use another finger, which we'll come to you later. Okay, so let's play lullaby then. And we're going forward and backwards and up and down your leg. Right leg. Here we go. Three, four. <laughs> start doing this your bow will go up here not that much but a little bit up there and one of the ways to, um, to try and get this new feeling this muscle memory is to do it with your eyes closed so let's just do the first two bars with our eyes closed and see where the bow ends up okay here we go three four <laughs> It's a completely different feeling, isn't it? And when we play, when we play the viol, we're usually looking at music and we're not looking at this. So any chance we get to put this, all this new uh, muscle memory on autopilot is a really good idea. So memorize and play with your eyes closed as much as you can to, to make you feel what this like with the bow on the string. So let's play the alibi again. And um, I'm going to play the bottom part. Um, and uh, we can play that together and your bow is going to go forward and back, not up and down. When you come back to the C string, it's still level. Okay, here we go then. Ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> to the piece that we looked at yesterday, Pizzicato, or in our last lesson, and that was Four Lane Hope. No, it wasn't, it was Up and Down Again. I think the play Up and Down Again, again. Because we've got fingers on and we're coming up and down, like this, with the, with the bow. I mean, I mean, forward and back. So, um, but first of all, because this is all new, we're going to do this without the left hand. And I bet you're going, what? What did you say without the left hand? Well, this is a good way of learning the, the bowing, but without having to think about your left hand. So it takes a bit of thought to begin with, but it helps you to um, learn the notes and where they are on each string. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, so we've got C on the C string, and then we've got D on the C string. So we just play another C, and then we've got open E, and then we've got F sharp, on the E string, so we play another E, and then G on the E string, so we play another E, and F sharp. So do you see what I mean? So let's let's just do the first line and practice this as a bowing exercise. Okay, here we go. Ready? Ah, oh, yeah. Don't forget to put the bow on the string and just breathe out and relax. There's lots of things to think about. Here we go. Three, four. <laughs> Is that, 
that make sense? Should we do it again? You're thinking quite hard, probably. Okay, here we go. Three, four. <laughs> take your bow off at the moment because I haven't told you how to take it off you're using your thumb to grip the stick the idea when you take the bow off the string is to use the next finger the ring finger or the third finger and the bow lifts off like that and takes the tip of the third finger takes all the weight and can you see how it changes the position of the palm the palm comes upwards doesn't it so if you remember, I said not that long ago, that if you have your palm upwards, it doesn't make the bow hold very secure. So, at the beginning. So, if you take the third finger off when the bow goes onto the string, your, your palm returns to its vertical state. So, lifting the bow off with the tip of the third finger and putting the bow on, off and on. And we'll come to do more of that um, in the next few lessons. It does certainly stop you gripping the bow with your thumb and first finger when you're lifting it off the string. Okay, let's see if we can do this now with the left hand. So we're putting a left hand on like this, bringing it up and round. And the further down we go on the strings, the higher the, the hand, and the further back this way we go, the lower the hand. But we're going to start in the middle now. And we're going to hold first finger down. Okay, so bow on the string. Here we go. And we're not going to hold first finger down for the first note though. Okay, here we go. Three, four. <laughs> absolutely brilliant and um, we want to try and hold as many fingers down for as long as possible to get the most of the resonance wherever we play on the viol so think about keeping your fingers down rather than lifting them up completely and you know the, the reason that we did this uh, piece in our last lesson the first lesson pizzicato is that I wanted to demonstrate how if you learn things pizzicato you do it with the bow without the left hand what you're giving yourself chance to do is to learn this and to learn this separately then you put it together and I find generally it's a quicker way for people to learn rather than doing too many things I think when we look at notes on the page and we look at the left hand we think well this is either a right note or a wrong note and then if the bow is on and the, tight, the hand tightens up and the bow direction isn't right or whatever, it often gets missed. So what can happen is that after a while, this, your sound doesn't develop in the same way your left hand does. So if you take as much care with the right hand as you do with the left hand, then both of these things, they, you learn them together and they improve together. Okay, that's that's it for today and um, I'll see you at the next lesson. <laughs>